Good morning and welcome Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group and our toll-free number 800 to the website at allamericangold.com. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. I mean, gosh, man, we've been doing this a really, really long time, uh, 20, what, 26 plus years uh, here at, at uh, Patriot Trading Group. Uh, I, this is, uh, what, I've been here 20 years now uh, doing this this show. And and I got to tell you, I want to thank you, people listening. And, uh, you know, technology can be a good thing, can be a bad thing, but uh, terrestrial radio, uh, people listening on the stream, uh, all you podcast people, man, share this thing, uh, subscribe to it, uh, make sure the word gets out today. We've got a big, listen, a big announcement coming today. You're not going to notice it. You're not going to hear it anywhere. Uh, we got a rally on Wall Street. That was up 600 points today. I'm not, I mean... Uh, and and uh, it's all garbage. I mean, literally all garbage. I'm just going to go over this. I got dimes at $105. I got quarters at $210. Silver Eagles, $665. Uh, silver's up $0.35, cents, $18.55 in rising. Uh, these, these, little, these low, and listen, these are low prices. They won't last. Pick some up while you have the opportunity. Gold is flat right now, uh, seventeen oh four right now on gold, uh, and we'll keep watching. Crude oil's up about three dollars. None of that matters. There's been a major development, in, and we 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 saw this with the war in Ukraine because it wasn't about Ukraine. And I sat here for how long saying this makes no sense. Right, the, the the this can't be. There's no reason for for this war whatsoever, which just meant it wasn't about what they told us. This is another banker war. To Jason's point, Jason has said, you know, when you go back and you look at pretty much almost all wars, it always has to do with money. One of the interesting things that happened with this war is when they went to the United Nations to, to sanction Russia. Remember I told you it was 92 nations for the United States. 83 against. In other words, 83 nations were like either, well, hey, we're just not going to vote. You know what? We're not signing. We're not. We're not signing anything, or, or publicly chastising Russia. We're not going to vote at all. Or no, you're you're wrong. One of those two. Uh, which nor and, and Jason, in recent memory, by well, the United Nations hasn't been around that long. But in recent memory, uh, this is this is unheard of. And we've been speculating for a while now about the BRIC nations, right? Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. There is word out today that there may be some new countries getting ready to join this BRICS alliance and of course, at the on the heels of the president uh, finally making it to Saudi Arabia, and I I find the timing very very interesting because number one, remember the Saudis they don't want to talk to Joe Biden. They have no interest in 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 him being there, and we saw our media outlets. Uh, at least the left-leaning media out. But, uh, oh, he shouldn't go there at all. They killed that journalist. Really? That 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 you know that, that that's the line, right? It, 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 and of course it isn't. But but here's the realities, Jason. I think this is slipping away. Uh, I think we're going to be left with uh, really maybe three different places. Uh, we're going to have 
the I'll call it China and friends. We'll have the U.S. and friends, and then we'll have maybe the IMF or the Bank of International Settlements. Settlements, uh, settlements excuse me. I think Japan is done. The uh, I, the euro I think is done as well. Uh, but but Jason, uh, when we get back from the break, I'm going to share with you who looks like they're getting to getting ready to join China and friends. Wow, there you go. And it, the New World Order, Joe, is uh, the next stage, uh, from what, I, what I've seen many times, that they're going to break uh, the world into like five zones or four zones or something. And, uh, yeah, and I, I, I think I'm, I'm going with a three-zoner. We'll see. Jason's right. It could be maybe it's four. But, but here's the thing. This is going to solidify. Now we know why the war went. Number one. Number two, uh, the digital currency, the reset. They're getting ready. This is happening, and it's happening quick. Get prepared. Patriot News Hour. We'll be back after the break. 800-951-0592. Just really quick. Uh, fake retail sales was up 1%, obviously, with inflation, uh, where they say 9%. Then that means it barely went up at all. Uh, but, but I say fake retail sales because... They're all manipulated in, in bogus numbers anyway. Uh, inside of that number, they get what they call the control group, right? They always got this this certain subset of numbers which gets put into GDP. Uh, it was up, I want to say, eight-tenths of a percent. That may be enough. It's going to be real close whether or not we get a technical we're in a recession. We'll know that on the 28th, uh, so uh, two, less than two weeks from today. Uh, did the United States technically enter recession? Uh, it, basically, second quarter GDP, if it's negative, then we'll be in. Technically, we will be in a recession, which is two straight quarters of negative growth. Uh, this retail sales number, uh, it's going to make it really close, Jason. Man, this whole thing is so rigged. I'm watching. Um, uh, Michael Burry has a new uh, prediction, Joe. And, man, people just better hold on to their hats. If things are going to get really crazy, Joe. I just uh... Yeah, so he here's where I'm at. I think silver is bottomed here. You want to be at the bottom and buy it. Now, gold, if gold hasn't bottomed, it's within 50 bucks, uh, 60 bucks of a bottom. But I think... Gold may have bottomed as well. I know the price is bottomed because guess what? Uh, gold gold's actually down two bucks. Prices are up from from the wholesalers today. I, like I can agree I with that. Yesterday, I warned you yesterday. Listen, there's nothing out there right now. Uh, this is an all out lead lead pipe lock of the week buy. Uh, rolls of silver dimes at 105. Rolls of silver quarters at 210. Uh, Silver Eagles at 665, and here's what I this is what I think. I think we've got a rally for Wall Street for the next two to four weeks, sometime in in August, and then we are going to have a very very ugly September, October, November, uh, and again, I think we're going to have a big, big gold and silver rally. In, in September, October, November. Buy it today. Close enough. You can't time this stuff. Do it and do it now. 800 951 So now sides are being taken. BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Those five nations. That's 40% of the glo global population in a in roughly 25 percent of GDP now obviously Brazil India China and take you know Russia was growing but obviously with the war they're kind of uh, you know having some issues high GDP growth countries I know China had uh, the worst GDP growth since we've been tracking it since the 90s. But again, remember, all of the second quarter, they had Beijing and Shanghai on full lockdowns. But now it appears 
that there are going to be three new members. Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Egypt. Now, I know all of you will be like, well, Egypt, Egypt, I uh, know that's, Egypt's actually very important. Uh, it, it, it's an important African nation to go with South Africa, plus its ties uh, to the Middle East, and, you know, and the Nile and all that. Turkey, Turkey's a NATO member, number one. Number two, an, another uh, very uh, large population group in, in Turkey. Let's face it, uh, Turkey's probably, what would you say, begrudgingly a NATO member, Jason? Yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree with that. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And then, of course, the big one, Saudi Arabia. So now we're looking at, what, close to half of the world's population is now going to be part of, of the BRICS nation. They'll probably move up to about a third of the GDP, and I think it's just getting started. All three of these countries have said that they are interested in joining BRICS and are preparing to apply for membership. They, uh, they, they're saying that uh, it is definitely going to bolster the BRICS global influence. And again, this is, this is when we talk about the new digital currencies, this is, this is where they're going to fall. Saudi Arabia, obviously critical in this. Because if once they join BRICS, uh, essentially we're going to see Saudi Arabia now say, hey, we'll take Renembi for oil, right? We'll take uh, reals for oil. And, of course, eventually when they get to the digital dollar or the, the digital currencies, my guess is it's going to be the Chinese digital currency. This, is a going to, this will have major effects for the United States. You know, the dollar's been on this great rally, and it's all well and good, but it really isn't because it's just rallying against other crappy fiat currencies but this is a huge development jason it is joe it is and so when joe joe's telling you that where you may be catching gold and silver on at a very low level i, I agree with that uh that things are getting ready to move i think very quickly in the, the rest of 2022 and I, I i think the future joe as as the uh, the next few years go by i think we're going to see some extraordinary things that we've never seen before and it's it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna make people uh, feel like a, it's gonna be a roller coaster. We are, we are literally in the next few years, Joe. I think gonna be seeing. Uh, I think you've mentioned this before. Uh, bullwhip. I think we're gonna see. We're gonna see bullwhip. I think the supply line issues are gonna end here soon, and I actually believe they're gonna do a head fake on inflation. Maybe this year soon. I, th it's. It, I just, I was just looking at this thing, Joe, between shows. Uh, it was Michael Burry calling for, for uh, a bullwhip. That's going to continue on and on and on and on. And this is where his 50% crash in the markets, he says it's happening in 17 days. 17 days. Well, it, listen, and I, I want to reiterate this to everybody. It will be very, very quick. It always is, right? And I, I, I say these examples all the time. How do you go bankrupt? Well, it was really gradual at first. And then it suddenly, uh, it go back to 008. Look how suddenly it was. Yep. Lehman collapsed, and the next thing you know, Bear Stearns has to be uh, gobbled up over a weekend. It was it was days. It was days where all of a sudden uh, Wall Street was just falling, uh, you know, three, four, five percent a day for you know three or four weeks and, and in three or four weeks uh, you're out 50 percent of your money uh, this, this is exactly how it happened that's why i said the rally for gold and silver is coming it's going to be big and and the window is going to be short yeah joe and i think it, it just keeps on going i, I just I, man i i telling you i i actually think that uh, you'll see markets gain and crash in the years to come at blistering speeds when the 08 uh, crash happened, it was severe. I think we're going to have one of those. I thought maybe it'd be a slow grind. Now I'm uh, listening to Michael Burry. It's like, well, 
it looks like we're going to have a big, huge crash. And then, Joe, I don't think it takes 10 years for them to get their so-called prices and markets back. I think it, it, it starts to climb really fast somewhere when it hits a bottom, and then it, it'll crash again. And I think the, covert, the corona crash, I'm starting to think coronavirus and the crash during the coronavirus show was a blueprint for our future. That's what I'm starting to think. Well, I don't know, but I'll say this. Here, here's uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping. I hope these countries join BRICS quite shortly as all the representatives of the core members are interested in expansion it will come very soon so again uh, when we watch this play out it, two things that that seems certain to me on this I think all three of these countries are joining BRICS and oh by the way they're not done right I, I think that was that 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 that's what I'm hearing is by the way, hey, here's these three. By the way, here's our big crown jewel, Saudi Arabia. Here, here's, here's us poking you in the eye with Turkey and Egypt. And oh, by the way, we're not done yet. Well, you know, we're going to see what, what this uh, turns into, Joe. We'll, we'll definitely see. This, this could be, uh, like I said, one of those uh, building emergencies that they're preparing us for so that when things go the wrong direction, uh, well, it's the BRIC nation's fault this time, Joe, or whatever. It's, 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 I, I think you're right. I think there's a, I guess the U.N. has a problem, huh? It's not quite as united as it used to be. Well, and again, I think this explains the whole war with Russia. I think this explains all of a sudden, you know, it's kind of interesting. Joe Biden's going to Saudi Arabia now. Kind of kind of weird, right? You think that, that, fist that bumping? would have happened. The, the fist bumping? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I gotta say it. I, I I watched way too much TV uh, the last day and a half, or really the other day. But I did see. Did you see? Joe Biden has been shaking hands with the invisible people a lot. Yes, he did it in Israel. So he he went to Israel. Uh, he's with the Israeli Prime Minister. You know, he's at the podium. They do their photo op. He, he turns to his left, shakes the Saudi Prime Minister's hand, then he turns to the right, he's got his hand out. Shaking the air, you know, I, apparently the alien person is, was there, I, I, you know, we can't see him, but Biden can see him, he sees dead people too. And the Israeli Prime Minister has to come up, put his arm around our President and point to the empty, to the two empty chairs, go sit here. I, I'm not kidding you, right? This, it, it, it's you don't think these other countries are seeing this? You don't see uh, that Saudi Arabia and, and these other nations are like, this is our chance, right? That let, let's face it, we uh, we invaded. You know, after 9/11, we invaded. Uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, and yet it was a bunch of Saudis that were in those planes. So, I mean, you do the math, right, Jason? They they don't really like us anyway. That's right, Joe. And and there's there's a re I think there's a reason why Joe Biden was supposed to be president for four years. We're playing checkers while the the controllers are playing chess, and and uh, there was, there was a reason that they didn't want. Uh, Trump to be president. There's a reason that Joe White had to be there. Maybe that the incompetence had to be so severe that uh, this next change had to happen on this four years of Biden, because he is by far the, the strangest individual ever to, to hold that office. I, I've never seen anything more bizarre than Biden as president. It's it's uh, it's definitely showing you how uh, how unimportant the position of president really is. Boy, you know what? Amen to that. That's probably the biggest thing. It really is. This is uh, almost kind of like uh, the Queen of England, right? The, the, you know, the royal family, uh, its figurehead. Uh, the, the, this, the, this is something where uh, it, it's really in plain sight now uh, that you can see it. But I, I can't emphasize this enough. This is huge. If Saudi Arabia joins BRICS, and, and again, Egypt and Turkey more important than most people think and and really uh, a a poke in the eye to the united states because uh remember uh we got turkey to allow uh finland and sweden to join nato but you know how we did it we bribed them right 
We're giving them more F-16s, right? We're giving them more, 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 more weapons, right? We, we bought them with weapons and, and now they're going to turn around, uh, and join BRICS. Uh, Jason, this is a huge, huge development. And at least according to the Chinese, this deal is intimate. Yeah. What about the, the nation that didn't join that should be joining? See, I'm hearing one thing in my brain that's rattling around that that you didn't mention, which what should because you you know me, Joe. The whole thing is rigged. Even the BRICS nations is rigged. So well, we give. I ask you on the other side. Uh, why isn't this other nation included in this little uh, joining of the BRICS? Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Gold prices up across the board this morning. Uh, gold's down a dollar right now. Uh, Seventeen oh five. Uh, silver is rallying here up uh, 38 39 cents uh, 1856 uh, I think silver is bottom I think 18 was the bottom uh, we, we've got dimes quarters and silver eagles uh, dimes 105 silver or I'm um, silver quarters 40 silver quarters 210 and then of course US silver eagles are all at 20. Uh, they are at six hundred and sixty-five dollars at eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Uh, gold just went positive here, uh, seventeen oh six. I got to make a correction. I second day in a row. I got to correct myself. Retail sales were up one percent. Inflation. This was a June number. I gave you. I was doing the annualized number that nine plus percent. The actual inflation for June, this is their inflation, not mine, because so you know it's higher than this, was 1.3. So technically, Jason, retail sales were actually negative yep. uh, because they were less than the actual rate of inflation. Uh, gasoline stations were the biggest contributors. Uh, they said online sales, and again, why I call them fake retail sales. They also said bars and restaurants were big contributors. Listen, I know half a dozen bar and restaurant owners in Arizona, and I can tell you that's a bunch of bull. Most of them have told me business is off 20% from where it was last year. But, you know, again, we'll see. One of the other things they've been telling me, too, here's the, the interesting thing. All of them said we're back to the usual hiring and i said well what does that mean he goes well you know we're always looking for a dishwasher or we're always looking for a bus boy uh or hey we're always looking for that uh, another hostess you know the girl at the at the front but otherwise, we're fully staffed. I, I got all my bartenders. I got all, I got all my servers. Uh, my kitchen. It, it, I, I got all my kitchen guys, and, and basically, all of them are telling me, Jason, yeah, we're, you know, we're back to how it always was. Maybe that's because demand for this employment is going down because their business demand has gone down. <laughs> Does well, that's all that really. That's what happened. Hey, that's I don't exactly need any more service. My business fell enough that I don't need it anymore. That's that's correct, Joe. And and uh, on the last hour, the last show that we uh, we were on, uh, Joe and I were on the common nonsense, and I didn't get a chance to. We were talking about the bankers and, and all this stuff, and uh, we played a, a Glenn Beck uh, clip. And it had one of the uh, Federal Reserve bankers on there. And I didn't get the comment in, which is one of the ways you can detect a liar is that they don't directly answer a yes or no question ever. I mean, sometimes you have to explain yourself before you answer yes or no, but they won't answer it, you know, they, it, you know yes or no. It's like when Joe brings information or I'm looking at stories of what's going on, for whatever reason, in my mind, I always got to figure out, well, what's missing out of this story? I'm always, in my mind, I'm, I'm so jaded that why, what am I being lied to about? And the, what, uh, what you were talking about, the BRIC nations, Joe, you know, and, and you'll forgive me if I miss this. Venezuela is not on that list, right? Is Venezuela joining? They, that, they were not invited, I take it. They, they have not been offered a, a membership a, as of yet. I think Venezuela will join. I also, I don't I think, think they'll be invited, Mexican, Joe. I don't think they'll be invited. I think that, well, we'll see. I think they will be uh, at some point. Uh, I think they will be. Uh, I also think mm -hmm. Mexico 
is going to go to the bricks. But You're making my brain uh, a whole lot right now, Joe. So the reason Venezuela used to be a top ten economy, they have the assets, the resources to be a part of this thing. They're not invited because they still have not uh, taken to a central bank that plays in the cartel with other banks. You know what you just said, Joe? Is well, I think they'll be invited, but well, they won't be because these BRIC nations all have central banks that are still working with ours. Whether you know you want to believe it or not, Russia's bank and China's bank they work with the Fed. It's just the way it is. But Joe, maybe you just paved the way. Maybe Venezuela is like, hey man, here's this rogue group. We'll get we'll get a central bank in place that, that plays with the BRIC nations. Maybe yeah, that maybe I, that's I, what I, happens, I, Joe. And, and, and I guess I need to clarify uh, my my answer uh, somewhat. I believe Venezuela will do what is necessary to gain membership, and that would be a man. You would just you just solve the bankers' problems with some of these nations. You create a rogue entity, and maybe Iran joins this little group too. They don't have a central bank. Yeah, so Iran will be one. I, I I'm not sure uh, about them. I, I would not be surprised to see uh, Iraq and Kuwait and UAE also join. Uh, that would not surprise me at all. I think the uh, Iran, I'm a little less certain of. Well, well, we will see, Joe. It is quite the trick that you know to, to, to sit there and prognosticate, and you know, you know, it's a theory, obviously. But you know, the, the way you get an uncentral banked uh, country that has a lot of assets, like Venezuela, especially, uh, pull a trick on them, say, hey, here's here's this new thing, here's this here's this rogue band that's going to get away from that uh, that evil American Federal Reserve. Uh, but you do have to be a part of our little central bank cartel. I don't know if Venezuela is, is, can be fooled that easily. I mean, I'm just a guy in America that sees it. You would think somebody there could see it, but maybe, you know, maybe leadership doesn't see it, Joe. And and that's how you get Venezuela's uh, assets back into the world system. That, that's that's uh, diabolical. It's crazy. And I'm going to tell you that that it, it, it really is a, it's a great point uh, by you being made uh, when, when talking about uh, Venezuela and Iran and, you know, I guess throw North Korea in there. See, uh, I don't see North Korea being invited. I don't see Iran being invited. But Venezuela, because of, of oil uh, and, and natural resources, I wouldn't be surprised. Cuba, I don't see them being invited. Yeah, yeah, well, they're not going to invite little tiny nations that are in agreement with them because, they're, yeah, their economies are too small. So there might be a, a line of countries that are, are trying to sign up, but that just won't be invited, Joe. Because let's face it, the you know, the uh, membership, right? There's the uh, the basket of currencies, the IMF. You have to qualify, right? Yeah, it, it, exactly. And I think they'll go after uh, countries with natural resources. I think you'll see uh, countries like Vietnam, uh, Cambodia. Uh, possibly uh, Thailand and, and, and those nations. I don't know, uh, you know, Thailand, Singapore, those are maybes uh, in my mind, but, but there's a very clear pattern here. Uh, the, the BRICS are in expansion mode, and, and I don't think we would see this press release out if they didn't feel like Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Egypt were in the bag. I guess the uh, the next few weeks and months are going to be pretty interesting, Joe. Lots, lots, lots going on. Lots, lots going on. This these next few months, Joe, are going to be uh, something that you don't want to be waiting to buy gold for. That's for sure. Whatever's going to happen, it will be very quick. To Jason's point, uh, there will be quick moves uh, both on the paper side and obviously on the physical sides uh, on Wall Street and gold and silver and the rest. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. 800-951-0592. Joe and Jason here today. And I just, man, things are so screwed up. And we, we've got a rally. That's great. It's going to be a wipeout. Uh, the bond market. Believe it or not, the highest yielding debt instrument, at least in the U.S. bond market right now, is the two-year note. It's actually inverted on the 30-year as well. So so right now, let me let me just throw some numbers out at you. Uh, a a, a six-month note yields 2.83%. 
the 10-year note, now the 10-year note is the standard here. It's yielding 291. So think about this. It costs, you, you, you get paid almost as much to lend money to the U.S. for six months as you do for 10 years. Uh, the five-year uh, uh, note yielding 3.03, .03. the two-year note, 3.11, the 30-year note, 3.08. So when we talk about yield curve inversion, usually what, they, what they're talking about is the 2 and the 10. When the two-year note yields more than the 10-year note, that means bad times are coming. We had this happen at the beginning, of, uh, at the end of last year. And guess what? It's been a crappy year so far for Wall Street. It's now happened again. And now, really, this is a full inversion. The, the two-year note, it's yielded more than the 30-year note, uh, which is a huge indicator. I mean, could you imagine, uh, like, the six-month note yielding more than the 10-year? Uh, because what's happening? What, why does this happen? Well, the shorter term, they're reacting to what? The Fed. I mean, think about it. The Fed, by all accounts, the Fed's going to raise 75 basis points in a couple weeks. Okay? That's what they're doing. That'll bring the rate to 2.25, which means all, like the three-month, the six-month, the 12-month, they're all going to be yielding close to or more than 3%. The reason why the 30-year and the 10-year are falling, right, the rates are dropping, is because, Jason, it's this bullwhip you talk about. They're like, hey, we think a, a big crash is coming. I think right, so. I think Joe, we're in the middle of the depression right now. I think it started in 2020. I think when when you if you if you could uh, veer off to 10 or 20 years from now and you look back at what's happening now, I think the depression started in 2020. I think that's what they'll look at. I, I think what what's what's heading our way, Joe, is 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 going to be such a spectacular crash, and and then you, you were talking about well, oh, the Dow's up 600 points today. You know, dur during the depression, 1929 to 1932. I mean, and, and things got worse in 33, by the way. Uh, just in those couple of years, there was 10 market rallies of 10% or more in those years. They were averaging 23%. Yep. All 10 of those those market uh, bubbles that went up, they, they averaged 23%. Joe, we're headed for that. I, I am convinced I'm, I'm convinced that we're going to see an up and down smashing of the, of the citizenry of the world. Of course, this country is what we care about most. I think we're going to see a colossal crash coming, and then I think it's going to bounce back. And I, and I I started to look at Michael Burry. You know what Michael Burry says? He's all the supply issues are done. We're going to see a glut. You know, I was wondering why are those ships out in the ocean for so long. Why are the, you know, if there's a problem, it's because they want to have a problem. Those ships sitting out there and sitting out there and sitting out there, they built this glut on purpose, Joe. They want to have a fake, a fake solution to the inflation. A, a, a temporary reprieve, which I think we, they, we may re, re, uh, reflect in this glut that's coming. And then the inflation is just going to get worse, and it's going to get worse, because you cannot have uh, stabilizing of prices if things are going to go as a bullwhip, Joe. You can't have stabilization well, of prices. Well, I, I don't know about the bullwhip. We'll, 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 we'll see. I think we're, we're in for uh, some – I think we're going to have a two- to four-week spike. And then we're going to have a much bigger leg down. What yep. happens after that is going to be interesting because I got to point it out today. There is a very, very dangerous thing happening in China right now. Obviously, China, it's reopened. But they're having what I would say the equivalent of the U.S. housing crash in China right now. Yep. Uh, they're saying uh, right now uh, China is is revolting on paying for homes. And in China, it's a little different. Most people, you buy your home, it's not even built yet. 
what's happening right now in China is at a very rapid pace. Disgruntled Chinese home buyers are refusing to pay mortgages for the unfinished construction projects. And obviously, like everything else, shutdowns in COVID, it's dragged on and on and on. And now they're saying that this has become, Jason, this has become uh, widespread. It's something you don't see, especially out of China. Uh, but these Chinese banks, Jason, again, we know what happens when 5 or 10% of people stop paying mortgages. Banks go under, uh, and already China was having banking problems already. Uh, this could be huge to your point of how do we go to glut? Well, China stops growing, right? We're in recession slash depression. And next thing to Jason's point, hey, there's a glut of everything again. That's right. And then at some point down the future, all that glut gets purchased up slowly. And then you go right back to, oh, print, you know, the printing of the money happens, goes right back to inflation. And you, it might be a cycle that's going to be hard for them to stop, Joe. Yeah, we'll be back right after the break. 800 uh, Silver now 1760, or I'm sorry, 1866. Uh, silver continuing uh, to, to show strength here. I think the bottom is in there. Again, dimes, rolls of silver dimes. You get 50 silver dimes for 105 bucks. Uh, man, that just seems so crazy, Jason, compared to where we were uh, just even three weeks ago. Quarters at 210. You get 40 silver quarters at 210. Uh, silver Eagles at 665. Uh, gold now 1707. Uh, just, just in positive territory. The Dow is up over 600 points on the fact that, well, the headline retail sales up 1% in June. Of course, inflation was 1.3, but hey, you know, why do any <laughs> math? Uh, you know, who cares about math? Uh, by the way, this thing in China, they're saying that it's happened now, it's expanded to more than 50 cities uh, throughout China where pe buyers of these unfinished projects are refusing to pay their mortgages. It's something to watch for when you when you say, why is this crash coming? And Jason's talking about, hey, we're going to go from shortage to glut. This is what happens because I think it's going to be severe. It's going to be significant. It's going to happen all at once. And if, it, if, if it's happening here and it's happening in China, right, it's already happening in Europe. Uh, then, then, then that that sets the stage for something really scary, Jason. Right, and after that glut, I think we see another shortage, and then after that, we see another glut. I think it'll, it's going to be a couple of phases. And with China, Joe, uh, we've already seen the pictures of them blowing up these huge apartment buildings because nobody wants them. So you know, their glut in housing, which we don't have a glut in housing, they have a glut in housing. So there, we're almost kind of going to be uh, reflecting what's going on in China. I think China is is, is kind of leading this crash that's coming in a lot of ways, Joe. So I, uh, I mean, it makes makes a lot of sense to me. Why why would you pay, Joe, for something that's not going to maybe ever get c completed in time, right? Yeah, and again, it, 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 it's it's going to be interesting. You know, we we we're watching Japan uh, as their currency has just fallen off a cliff. Uh, Mario Draghi, remember him, the former head of the ECB? He's the Prime Minister of Italy. Uh, he announced last night he is going to step down uh, as the Prime Minister of Italy as oh they boy. are in another oh uh, bond crisis there, Jason. So there's so many. I mean, let's face it, there's fuses <laughs> lit everywhere. I think he looked over at Sri Lanka. He's like, I better get out while I have time. That's that's, yeah. that's what I think. <laughs> yeah, before you. they raid my house. Well, Joe, remember in 2019 there was a record amount of CEOs in America. It, it, it broke the record of before the the 08 crash. Record amount of CEOs were retiring and getting out. Uh, it sure seems like if you see a lot of nations going into in, into uh, into collapse and in, in default, uh, you may not want to be ruling one of these nations in the next six months to two years, right? Yeah, well, again, I think these the developing nations, 
Uh, there's going to be a lot more Sri Lankas. Uh, there's a big article out where uh, Europe is just paying out the wazoo for natural gas. Uh, and now a lot of these third world nations can't even get enough gas. There's blackouts uh, all over the globe that aren't really being reported in the mainstream. Uh, and I got to tell you, how about this in, in, in Texas? Toyota, Tesla, Samsung, all closing their factories to try to make sure the power doesn't go out. What the heck is going on? But like Jason said, hey, this this shortage turns into a glut real fast.